Hello everybody, this is Tech Cut. In this video, we are going to be talking about Ubuntu. And I'm not going to be focusing on the past when it comes to Ubuntu. In this video, I'm going to be talking about today, the state of Ubuntu as it is now, specifically the last few months leading up to today. Shortly after the launch of 22.04, the very latest LTS version of Ubuntu, I changed my primary production computer to the ever so popular Linux system. A while when this first came out, my overall initial impressions were pretty good. Playing around with it in a virtual machine for a couple days or so gave me no issues at all. So in this video, let, let's talk about the long term experience with this thing. But before we get too deep into the weeds, we need to thank the sponsor of today's video, eDraw Max. This is a wonderful all in one diagram software with a rich templates for all scenarios, flowcharts, UML presentations, and much more that allows you to transfer your ideas into visuals. Better yet, this application is supported on Windows, Mac OS, and best of all, Linux with official packages for Debian-based systems as well as Fedora. If you're at all familiar with Microsoft Visio, this is a fantastic alternative for that and it actually supports the Visio format, as well as the ability to export to various Microsoft Office formats, PDF, JPEG, SVG, and much more. They provide a workspace that allows you to create up to 280 different types of diagrams, including flowcharts, network layouts, floor plans, and more. With over 10,000 templates, 26,000 symbols, and other resources provided, the possibility for making your diagrams is nearly endless. They also have a rather extensive templates community, which will give you access to even more ideas and possibilities with what you can do with the software. This right here is a diagram I made to help me keep track and manage my home lab and I frequently go back to it and make changes. And if you want to go ahead and give it a shot today, you can go ahead and try it out for free using the link in the description. So getting into my experience, before we go ahead and dive into some of the details of the issues that I've been having, we're gonna talk about the good. First, Ubuntu Server. I've actually been using Ubuntu Server over there on my home lab as the primary distribution for quite some time. Basically everything outside of that uh, Synology NAS hiding back there all is run on a Ubuntu server. So this hosts my Jellyfin server for all the media streaming, it hosts my RStudio server and any other things that I need to run. With this use case I've never had any issues and I actually use Ubuntu server for my main website and basically anything I need to do on the cloud over on Linode. Again, no issues and it's actually kind of better than no issues because I've never had any software related downtime at all. Updates are quick and a vast majority of them do not require a restart and when I do need to restart my server for whatever reason, downtime is usually less than like 30 seconds. I've never had any issues with package availability and in my personal experience, I have not had any significant problems with snap packages on Ubuntu server. I actually primarily ran Nextcloud on my home server before I went ahead and switched over to Synology. And I actually installed that using the uh, snap installer little thing dialogue that comes up when you go ahead and install Ubuntu server for the first time. As a server, Ubuntu is phenomenal. There's a reason why it's so widely used by various organizations, websites, people with home labs. Overall, it's it's just rock solid. So moving on to the desktop, my initial impressions were great and it finally felt like a final product after a few uh, awkward point releases. And that wasn't just my initial impression to begin with. A lot of people absolutely love the system. And actually jumping onto the system, I really do love what they did with the GNOME desktop environment to make Ubuntu stand out kind of as its own thing. Because it's so widely used, software availability really is there. For example, uh, Synology NAS only makes a uh, Debian package for their drive instance. And the display link drivers that I needed to install for this little pluggable dock that I have, which by the way is phenomenal has worked absolutely perfect and they even all started working while the installation process was going on my monitors all turned on it was beautiful so over a couple weeks i spent some time setting up my network shares gathered all the applications i need and did some of those initial customizations to give myself a workflow that works best for me and this is where i ran into my first issue and it was kind of a precursor of what was to come i was trying to install the uh, open weather extension up in the top bar and for some reason it just would not work. Enabling it through either extension managing utilities resulted in a crash or it just disabling itself. And then when it would actually stay up in the top bar and I tried to open the settings, you'd see a little kind of 
pop up in the side taskbar and it would just kind of crash. And it wasn't just this one extension having issues, it was persistent throughout a majority of extensions. Which I, I love GNOME, don't get me wrong, but it is missing some functionality and using certain extensions are almost required to have a decent experience. Watch, this might be changing. Uh, they're making some pretty cool changes to the next version of GNOME, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you do not miss the video that I make going over some of those changes. And just over time, things kept happening. Like I needed to update my graphics card and I kept getting this error right here. Yes, it was a uh, very helpful in guiding me to uh, solving the potential issue. And as time went on, more issues kept piling up. Applications began to freeze all the time. And sometimes the crash would be so bad, I'd have to hard shut down my computer, reboot, and hope that I could actually recover whatever it is that I was doing. Shout out to Caden Live, you're getting a lot better with the uh, recovery functionality. I do thank you guys for that. Pipewire started breaking quite a bit, which basically renders OBS useless, and it's absolutely required for what I do here. I'm recording on my audio with OBS right now, and I had a couple different issues with OBS. So eventually, it just stopped working completely. In the beginning, there was a missing package, which I'll get into in a little bit, but I really tried putting up with all of this for as long as I could, and just just because I didn't feel like installing another distribution, I spent a lot of time setting everything up to be able to just work productively. And it was getting so bad that eventually I gave up and installed a uh, Fedora distribution, which I, I should have done to begin with. But I had real high hopes for this LTS version of Ubuntu. I just wanted to run it and give my opinions on it, which I was hoping would have been uh, rather positive experience, but eh. I don't like making videos where I bash things, but this whole experience just left me with a gross feeling. <laughs> Ubuntu is kind of like the representative or a, a representation of Linux to people who aren't too familiar with the software, and in this case it just did not do a good job. And the issues I experienced were well beyond the hardware I was using. I've had good experience and I'm currently having a good experience with other distributions on this laptop. On top of all of this, I, I almost forgot to mention, the Ubuntu Software Center just wouldn't open up. And if I was the only one experiencing these issues, it would be a completely different story. There are countless people going through basically the same thing that I'm going through. I posted a little summary of my experience on Twitter and it got a quite a bit of replies. Here Justin says, I too have noticed freezing stalls and stutters that I hadn't noticed when using Debian or Fedora. He asks if it's faulty GNOME extensions and honestly it very well could be, or at least one of the contributing factors. Other people admit Ubuntu is fragile, not as stable as it could be, and for a lot of people everything was fine before the 22.04 release. Other people People report switching to other distributions because they have to spend more time than anybody should having to fix things like Pipewire and Bluetooth. And of course, there are people who have had absolutely no issues at all, and that's awesome. But the ratio of people to have problems versus not is simply unacceptable for what is the standard in the Linux space. And finally, what I want to talk about is packages. A very common complaint among a lot of people is that Ubuntu is bloated. And I understand where most people are coming from, but the problem I have is that it just might not be bloated enough. The package that it does include versus it doesn't include is rather odd. First, the Fuse packages, if you've ever tried running an app image, you will get a warning telling you that you need to install these packages. Now, that is nice if you're trying to run an app image from the terminal, but if you're going to just make it executable, double click on it, you're not going to get that warning and you're going to think that the whole system is just broken for that. Another example that I kind of mentioned earlier is with OBS. I ran into an issue where the uh, display capture simply was not an option, which is a, a, a rather critical feature to Open Broadcasting Studio. I found out that Ubuntu is missing the XDG desktop portal package that allows this feature to even work, and it is the desktop integration portal for both Flatpak and Snap packages. I try new distros all the time. I hop around quite a bit just to kind of experiment and test out new features, and this is the first time that that has ever been an issue on Wayland. Also, I'm not going to go into a full deep dive in the rabbit hole that is the uh, debate about Snap packages, but I do wish Canonical was a little more open to community criticism for this packaging format, wh whether it be their centralized Snap store or many of the issues that people tend to report. If they would just adopt flat packages that would set in stone the standard 
for Linux packaging, and it really would just make everything easier for everybody. Now that's an opinion. I know some people also have had bad experiences with flat packages, but for me, even on Ubuntu, I didn't really have any issues with any of the flat packs that I've ran. Even with Firefox, I ran the Snap version for a little bit and it was sluggish slow. I switched to the, uh, the Debian, the main repository version that stopped opening for some reason. And then I switched the flat pack and it worked perfectly fine. I've seen people report that the flat package of Firefox is a little slower, but I guess it's a system by system basis type thing. And even for the uh, server and command line, I understand that snaps do have uh, mixed opinions with this as well. I said earlier, I, it's, it's a great use case for them, but people people tend to avoid Ubuntu specifically for snap packages. Ultimately would love Ubuntu to again be the distribution that you could recommend to anybody at any skill set. In its current state, I really can't recommend Ubuntu as a desktop to anybody to the point where I think it would almost be a mean thing to do. And it really sucks because Ubuntu is how I and many other people started out in Linux. It's it's just not up to par to some of the other options that we currently have available to us. Currently, the ball is in Red Hat's court as Fedora has become what Ubuntu used to be as many other people in the community have stated over and over again. With all of that, check out eDrawSoft if you want to make some badass diagrams. Great software. Even if you run Ubuntu, go ahead and install it. Fedora install it. Whatever system you're on, it will or it should work perfectly fine. Uh, with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye.